Thank you for tuning in to the best parenting show on the internet. Post Daily Dose. Hey there, Post Institute. This is Christy Saul, the co-founder, coming at you live in the bright sun. Hey, that's a little bit better. With another episode of Post Daily Dose, the best little parenting show on the internet. I hope you guys are having an incredible day. Hey, let me just show off this little t-shirt real quick that my my daughter picked out for me. I just love that. It says Advocate Mama and with a little wheelchair and the sunflower. Uh, she has a couple of people that she follows. I uh, think through Twitter, uh, who are disabled artists, and I think that's really cool. And so she buys their artwork, and she buys their stickers, she buys the t-shirts that they make. Um, and I hope, I am hopeful, I am so hopeful that when she gets older and she starts putting her art out there, that um that that will also be reciprocated because she's pretty amazing and whoever's throwing those hearts up thank you thank you thank you that always makes me just feel so happy to see the little floating hearts and uh dorothy you haven't said hi but my notifications are telling me that you're watching so much love to you i hope you're doing well um and i look forward to talking to you later this week <laughs> I think that was you with the hearts and the laugh. That's awesome. So my topic tonight, words, attitudes, behaviors. Um, Brian says uh, behaviors, how does he put it? Uh, added feelings, attitudes, behaviors, something close to that. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to break it down just a little bit different. He talks about this in his um, three pathways of, of emotional expression, three pathways of expression. So... I'm going to say it like this, words, attitudes, behavior. When our children can't use their words, sometimes that's because we have told them that they cannot use those words. Um, sometimes those words are big words, hurtful words, words with a big zing to it. And so sometimes we have disallowed them to use those words. And so when words, or sometimes they're just not available to them. Sometimes they're in such a state of distress emotionally that their brains are so overwhelmed with cortisol or me or you or anybody. This is a human condition, right? This isn't just about our children. Sometimes when our brains are so flooded with cortisol, as we know, it causes our short-term memory to be suppressed and our thinking to be distorted and confused. And it can also make it very hard for us to articulate our thoughts. And take it from me, someone who's teaching their 15, their 17-year-old how to drive, sometimes I'm over in the passenger seat and I'm grunting and pointing. <laughs> <laughs> because I cannot get the words to come out. Literally can't get them put, I can't get the thoughts put together and I can't put them in, in my mouth to come out in any way that makes any sense. And so I know firsthand <laughs> about how that can work. Oh, I've got a viewer from the Philippines. How cool. I love, I love the global aspect of social media. I think that is so awesome. So, words, attitudes, behavior. If uh, our kids, sometimes they've got such big feelings that they don't come out in words. Their brains are so flooded with those stress hormones that they, that behavior is how they are communicating their distress and their upset. It's actually, it's actually a good sign when they can use those words, even if those words are hurtful, even if the words are are painful if they're not allowed to use words then the next thing they'll go to is an attitude and that's like a huff <sighs> an eye roll i am an eye roller so eye rolls are like my adjustment like adjustment right so eye rolls size door slams and then we start getting into things more aggressive, like, you know, hitting somebody or punching a wall or throwing things. So when your children are in a place where they're distressed, 
and they're using their words, it's actually an indicator that they're doing better. Yeah, it's actually an indicator that they're doing a little bit better because they're not having to drop all the way in to behavior, that they're able to actually have enough oxytocin available in their brain to use their words. And it can be extremely valuable in those moments when the, when the emotions are really present and it's really available if you are in a safe place to say, tell me more, tell me more, tell me more, tell me more, meet them in that emotional place. And while it's open, while those pathways are open, tell me more. I've had two parents, two parents in the last week who've taken that pathway and they said it got messy. It got messy. I heard a lot of messy stuff. I heard a lot of pain, but I heard it. It didn't have to come out through a behavior. It didn't have to come out through destruction of property. It didn't have to come out through self-harm. So, words, attitudes, behavior, they're all different ways that we communicate. Those are all different forms of communication. And when our children are able to, or people are able to use their words, it's an indicator that there's at least enough safety they feel safe enough and there's enough oxytocin available for them to use those words. And that is a, an incredible opportunity if you are in that, like you have to be in that emotional space. You have to be in that safe space. You have to trust that you're going to make it through to the other side. But I'll tell you, when they can purge like that with you and you can be like their witness... That's like, that's that place where you're like, this is, this is what healing looks like. This is what healing looks like. It looks kind of messy at first, but how can you help heal a wound until it's revealed? And there it is revealed. And that gives you that chance to just really love them through it. Um, Ina said, you should have the authority when, when you know to them, then it's a no. Well, when you tell them no... For that no to be respected, that's where that relationship piece comes from. And I know a lot of kids, they'll hear the no, you'll get a reaction. And if you can, I'm thinking about in the Great Behavior Breakdown in particular, how Brian talks about that. A lot of times if you give them, if you give them a few minutes like they're as soon as you're asking you're asking maybe for a transition or for them to do something different and a lot of times they'll come in asking about something that in their mind they have already like my nephew used to do this um, he'd come out of his room and ask for something and if he got told no it would be like a major like uh, like oh uh, uh, like huge upset a couple of things that I notice about that one is that their disappointment, the feeling of being disappointed for some kids actually pulls on like this emotional thread inside of them that is connected to this feeling of great devastation. And so you may think you're saying no to Kool-Aid, but that no, then they get disappointed and the emotion of disappointment that they have inside gets connected to something even bigger for them. And so that's that's one piece of connection that I have seen many, many times. <laughs> um, and then the other is that they may, in their mind, they may have already had the whole full experience. Like, I'm going to, I'm waiting until the commercial break, then I'm going to go in, I'm going to ask for this Kool-Aid, it's going to taste so good, it's going to be the best Kool-Aid of the world, I'm the Kool-Aid king, it's going to be so good, and then I'm going to run back in, I'm going to watch the rest of my shows, and they get told no, and so the no is like the whole fantasy, the whole fantasy just got blown up by one simple no. So there's more, there's, there's a lot under the surface when we start talking about sensitive amygdala, the amygdala hijack, what's going on under the surface for our kids, and knowing that when we stress, we regress. So you may have a 13-year-old 
one minute and the next minute a 30 year old and then the next minute a two year old and that is that's just the nature of of what it is that our children are experiencing internally so remember words attitudes and behaviors if they're not able to use words then attitudes will come next and behaviors next and some of that has to do with their internal state how much oxytocin is available for them at the brain level how regressed they may be feeling but it's all communication it's all communication so if you've not already done so today press pause on everything give yourself five or ten minutes to adjust the position of your heart remember what we came into this for we came into this because we felt like we had love to give and children who needed that love so go spend time with your babies let the love you have for them shine from your eyes. Let them feel it from your body. This time of connection and relationship can do so much. I know it sounds so like it's such a little thing, but this one little thing of spending this connected time together builds a part of their brain that helps the entire system function better. Remember, in any given moment, we can act out of our blueprints of stress and fear and overwhelm. All of us can. All of us have an amygdala. That amygdala can get flipped. We can take one to two to three deep breaths and we can choose love. Much love to you guys. Have a blessed evening. We'll see you all tomorrow.